Hey guys, I thought that I'd go through uh, one of our questions, the section eight lab, our one sample hypothesis of proportions, uh, to try to answer a few of the questions that I've been getting uh, from, from you all. Okay, so one of the questions that I've had is, first of all, like how do we change our factor level? Because if we can't change our factor level, sometimes when we're doing this hypothesis testing, we wind up testing the no's instead of the yeses, and we've got to know how to change that factor level because our commander wants to do it in alphabetical order, uh, unless if we force it otherwise. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm just going to go to the data. Um, so this is that flossing every night one. I'm going to highlight it, copy it, bring it over to my R commander. Let's import our data, clipboard, tabs, and click OK, and click Yes. Okay, so. And if we look at my data set, uh, it looks like that we got it in correctly. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to change the factor level. So if I go to data, manage the variables, then I can go to this reorder the factor levels. I want to click this make ordered factor. I want to click OK, and it's going to say, hey, this variable that already exists, do you want to overwrite the variable? I want to say yes. The only thing I want to change is the factor level, which one it sees as factor level one, and which one it sees as factor level two. So right now it says no is number one, and I want that as two, and I want yes is number one. Now it's gonna be doing the test based on the yeses instead of the nos. And click okay, and it should have changed the factor level. And we can check that real quick by, let's just run our single sample proportions. And we can go to our options. We'll do, sure, a not equals test. And for this one we'll say, we can set the confidence level to 92% since we have an alpha of 8%. And the null hypothesis is that it's going to be 69. And, oh, let's see. He thinks that the proportion is too high, so he thinks it's going to be less than. And we can go ahead and click OK. And here we go. So scrolling on down, we can see now that this P, we can see that the yeses are first and that the nos are second. So we know that we got our factor level correct. And uh, we can go on to some of the other questions that, that we had. So one of the other questions was, okay, I, and I, this came up on a couple of sections about, I had either the question of justify using the central limit theorem or uh, another question of, do we need to worry about the original distribution of the individuals? Okay, so that question is just going back to saying, okay, do we need to be using the central limit theorem? Can we use the central limit theorem? Um, and and we, we were able to determine that is, so first of all, if we have numerical data, we don't have to use the central limit theorem if the original distribution is normally distributed. And so we could have a very small sample size. But if we don't know what the original distribution is, then we've got to be able to use the central limit theorem to be able to use basically the approximation of normal if our sample size is large enough. So for this one, uh, we only have one sample that's being taken. So this uh, one group of these people from Casper and they're just saying yes or no. And for the central limit theorem to work here, both of these, the yeses and the nos have to be at least 15. And so we have at least 15 in both of these groups so we are okay to use that. Okay, so the last question that I wanted to cover is this question about attach this picture that shades in the rejection region. Okay, so the rejection region is we, we just need to be able to draw a, a distribution that will show us like how far away from the mean do we need to be in order for us to find uh, significant results. Okay, so what we can go is we can go to our distributions. We're going to do continuous. Since we're using this, um, oh, our test of proportions, we're going to be using a normal or a Z distribution, okay? And let's get a, we need to go to normal quantiles first. All right, so the probabilities here is we can use this, this alpha level of 8%, okay? And we think that it's actually, that something's actually too big. So our rejection region is we think that it's actually less than what is being stated. I know you kind of have to think about that a little bit, but the rejection region is we think that it's actually going to be smaller uh, than what is actually stated. Okay, so we're going to put in for our probabilities this 0.8, 
And we've got the mean. Well, we can change what the mean is. We can change it to this uh, 0.69. And then we'd have to go and figure out our standard deviation. That's not too hard. We can figure that guy out. It's just going to be the square root of our p, 0.69 times 1 minus 0.69 divided by our sample size. And our sample size is, well, we'll just go over here, this 62 plus 35. So I'll just do 62 plus 35. And if I hit enter, there's my standard error that I can use. I'll copy that. I'm going to paste that right up here. Oops, give me a second. There we go. So I've got that pasted in and this is going to be the lower tail. Okay, because I'm looking forward to the left. And I can go ahead and click OK. And it gives me this value of this uh, 62 or 0.62401. All right, I want to highlight this real, oops, real quick. Give me just a second. Let's highlight that. And I want to copy it because I'm going to need it. OK. So now I'm going to go into, let's go into a graph. And, or let's go to distributions, continuous, normal, and let's plot this normal distribution. Okay. So once again, the mean is going to be 0.69. The standard deviation, I'll get there in just a second. Uh, we'll go from 0 to this value that we just got, and I need to put in our standard deviation, or it really it's our standard error. We'll copy that, and we'll paste it. And let's color it something other than gray, because gray is abysmal. It makes me sad. So we'll change these guys a little bit, and sure. We'll do this purple, and we'll click OK, and click OK. And give me just a second. Let's see if I can find where I put it. And here we go. So this is our region that, that we are looking for. So this is our mean, this is our standard deviation, and this should be roughly 8% of our data. And you look at that and you're like, yeah, that looks like about 8% of the data. And it's centered at our mean of 0.69. We've got this as our standard deviation. We should probably label this a little bit better, um, but for right now, th this will be okay. Uh, you know what, here, let's, let's actually give it a shot. We'll close out of that. We'll do another one. Graph, or sorry, distributions, normal, and plot normal, and oh, it's not going to, well, okay. We can go through how to put labels on it, but just real quick, just for the rejection region. Right, so this is going to let us know that if we land down here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis that 69% of people floss every night, and we could claim that, hey, no, we actually think it's less than. So this is what I was looking for for that rejection region. And, and I adjusted the points to like make up for, for that, that one spot. If you wound up getting it right, you got a little bit of extra credit. Um, but this was just supposed to help you have a visual of what we are looking for in, um, in our hypothesis testing for our rejection region. All right, good luck, you guys.